Hey class, uh, at this point you've been introduced to the fusion summative and I've gone over uh, the parameters of the project itself, uh, the do's and the don'ts, and I've talked to you about some suggested items that you might be able to work with or, or to, to make some ideas of some items that you might be able to make. Um, <clears throat> Want to talk about the final product real quick. Uh, you're going to be printing the 3D item up and then also there's a design report. It's going to be a PowerPoint template that you fill out. Each of these items is going to be a slide. Um, the abstract problem explains right here what you're to do in there for it. For the concept sketch with labeling, gives the points for each thing and tells you what I want for that on that slide. Uh, for the isometric picture of your final printed design and final product, I want a isometric of the correct orientation that shows the most information. Um, and you're also getting graded on how effectively it was made and how polished and refined the object looks. Uh, the multi view fully dimensioned to the teacher's specifications. Uh, you're going to dimension your multi view and depending on your object, I may say omit certain dimensions um, and keep others and that's just going to be a per basis but you do have to dimension your multi-view but certain things like lettering if you emboss something i'm not going to make you dimension those small little items so i'll talk to you about that on an individual basis you do need to on one of the slides write out the steps on how you make the object and you can use the timeline feature in fusion to kind of help you with that um, and then your overall uh, design report, how polished it is, how free of error, do the pictures, are they sized proportionally on the page uh, and labeled and just uh, just looks refined and polished in nature. Okay, I want to go over a few different things in Fusion. First, I want to talk about how you can use the shell feature. So really simple on using that. I will just go ahead to this one. Uh, once you extrude the object, it goes up, hit OK, bring it down. And you can just hit this little shell uh, right here, shell the top of it. And you just specify what thickness you want the shell wall to be. I'll just say 0.1. And there you go. Now you can tweak that and modify that thickness. And whatever shape you have, uh, it'll shell it out, but if it is a very involved shape with a lot of hard corners, it might not shell it out the way you want, and you might get an error on it. So that's that first uh, feature tool I wanted to show you. The next one I want to show you is this item right here, which is using the loft tool, which is taking one uh, shape on a sketch and another shape or sketch on another plane and bringing them together and marrying them together. So I want to kind of show you how to do that. I'm going to come here to this sketch here. So I want you to kind of see I made a sketch of a circle. I'm now going to do a construction plane, an offset plane, and I want to offset the plane to this. So what I'm doing is I'm making another plane that I'm going to put a sketch on and then I'm going to bring the two together. So I got another plane up there. I hit OK. Put a sketch on that plane. So we are now on this other plane. Bear with me here. And I'm going to do just a rectangle. Okay, I'm going to finish the sketch. I now have two shapes like so. And then you can loft them together. This one and this one, and it brings them together. Now, depending on the intricacy of your different uh, sketches, you might error out on when you try to loft them together. Um, but two basic items like this or even more uh, involved, it'll be fine. Okay, so that's another thing that you guys might want to use. The final thing is, is I want to show you how to dimension. Okay, so I want to just pull up this multi view and kind of want to show you how to use it. First and foremost, if you don't want this on yours because it's getting in the way and you have a right view, come over here to title block under sheet. 
You can just turn it off like that. Uh, to dimension, okay. Over here uh, under document settings, you can have it on fractional inch or decimal, it depends on what you want it on. Um, but to dimension, you can use this dimension tool right here. We can just dimension from here to here, pull it out and place it. Left click, left click and left click. Um, there's a little bit more to it and I'm gonna show you that, but I wanna show you how to make that number bigger. You click on the dimensioning format, click on that little icon and come under the text. The medium text is the values there. So you can make it a little bit bigger and you hit okay. And the number gets bigger and you can see it. Okay, so I wanna show you how to do baseline dimensioning. So underneath of this baseline, it says baseline dimension. For to do baseline dimension, you need to have a regular baseline first. So it says select baseline dimension. We're gonna select this. And now it wants us to select the intermediates in between. So I'm gonna do that right there. I'm gonna right click then and hit okay. And of course, you know that you need to have this further from the object. This should be closer. Drag in like this. There we go. So to do baseline, you have to have an overall dimension first. And then from there, after you place that, you can go under here with uh, baseline dimension and say, hey, this is my baseline. And then I want to do this feature and this feature and this feature, for example, and then right click and hit OK. And you can see there that it drew them. You would just need to drag them closer. OK, so you can grab this one right here, pull it further away if you need to and pull these closer. You can bring this back onto the page. Okay, the last thing I want to do is show you chain dimensioning. So I'm going to go ahead and do an overall dimension again, like so. And then under here, dimensioning, uh, chain dimension. So it says select your base dimension again. And then it wants you to do the chains. So let's do a chain here and here and here. And right click and hit OK. And at that point, there it is. That's the chain right there. It created a chain instead of a baseline dimension. Uh, so it's just a different style. So try to nest these as close to the object as you can. Okay. Including the other ones. Get them nice and close. So that then... Uh, there we go. So that everything fits onto a page. Okay, so those are the things I wanted to show you. Going back to the summative, uh, open up the... Uh, design written design template PowerPoint. Uh, talk to me if you have any questions about it. Uh, again, you need to make sure you finish that report. Of course, you have your 3D object that's printed, that's yours, but a picture of that in your final design and isometric is what needs to go into this report. Um, grading's right next to everything. If you have any questions, let me know. And that's that.